Hey, this is Brian Stillman. I'm back with CES 2020. We're here with Audrey Arbini of Audio Brain. That is uh, your audio auto, audio branding. Is exactly, that sonic branding. Sonic branding. Audio branding, sonic branding, it has very many names. They're all okay. the same. So explain to me what that is. Sonic branding is the strategic and creative development of a holistic sound for a brand. And then sonic identity is to leverage that out across multitude touch points so that you have like a unified communication. So you're not one-offing right. your podcast without having other assets that surround it right. that really give your brand a narrative because your customers now are very connected with emerging technologies and they're hearing you in many different places. So it's this understanding that when you have a brand, when you have a product, when you have an identity, it's all these components. So it's your logo, it's everything, but there's also the sounds that are associated with it. So when you talk about a podcast, it's the intro music. Exactly. It's the little, exactly. Maybe a little chime that comes on at a key point in the broadcast. I don't know, whatever, whatever it might be. Um, but also I imagine things like, like I'll listen to um, uh, CBS FM, there, there's a distinct quality to the broadcasters. They had a little bit of reverb, so their voices always had this weird sort of vintage -y quality to it. Would that yeah. be something that you would be working with them to develop? Absolutely, absolutely. And what we do is we start out with a, a real discovery phase, a strategy phase. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make a sonic DNA, a blueprint of where that brand is, what makes it unique, what, what what makes it different than anyone else right. and so it could be things like that reverb or when we did the uh, the Logitech the Jaybirds right they have very distinct sounds Whirlpool appliances very distinct sounds Xbox 360 which someone just sent me an article is like one of the top 10 audio logos and why they work so I was really very cool to get <laughs> cool. that but it wasn't just the Xbox it was right. who played the launch party what the speakers walked up to the um, podium to to speak at E3 the sound that was going around the sti you know the um, auditorium right when you connect all these things the audience gets this real holistic experience we can't live in a disconnected world anymore you can't just do a sound logo and you can't just do a jingle it's very very immersive customers need that emotional connection so when you talk about walk-in music it's not just random like oh what song do you like I mean a lot of thought is going into that yeah absolutely and we started doing that many years ago I mean I'm doing this 25 years because we had an executive that walked into a very popular funny song and it was a serious CEO conference and everyone oh. laughed but he didn't laugh oh. and then he said and he said can you create something so our people could walk up to speak to something that feels like our brand and now every brand we do they have walk on music break music right. uh, video opens and closes uh, VR tours of their facilities all the sounds of voice branding is tremendous what's the voice of your product what's the voice of your brand these things are really really important now because the consumer is listening so many platforms you've got them in your car you've got them on podcasts you've got them in in your at-home devices so if things are disconnected they kind of can sense that the other thing too is there's so many technologies that are driving this now just in the past few years in healthcare right. particularly in healthcare in um, anything that's um, voice first sound first is gigantic right now what do you look for when starting to craft a sonic identity for a brand? What are the key things that you initially sort of land on, and then how does that develop out into a bigger bigger branding? Sure, the first thing that we do is we we come in and we want to be a compass, and we, we, we're, we have a lot of expertise in this, so we have tools though to make it really enjoyable and not heavy for the, our clients to do. We collect everything they have, we create a sonic filter, so they have certain characteristics. We're not interested in table stakes. If you're a bank and your attribute is secure, 
we're not really that interested in that. You should have that. We're interested in that top of the pyramid that makes you you. So we gather all of their documents, where the brand is going, where the brand has been. Are they trying to do something like shift a demographic, move into a different market? Do they have new products coming out? What are they, who's their audience? And then we take everything together and we collectively create like a, a brand filter. And from there, we translate that into a sonic filter. So there's many different ways to say those characteristics. What's resonating best with them? What does sonic filter mean? A sonic filter is if when we when we work with the brand, they'll have they'll have like a hundred descriptions of what their brand is about. Okay. But when you really line them up, you'll have between three and five core characteristics that we have to our personalities. Okay. Think of the brand as living. I have certain parts of my personality, you have certain parts of yours. Sure. We're not one dimensional. Right. So we want to take each of those and find what type of sound resonates most for that characteristic. So dependable for me is that I'm like very, uh, you know, on time and I, I'm very proactive, but one of my composers is very quiet and very seamless. His dependable would sound different than mine. So we work to just find the right lens for the brand. And once we have that, once we have that blueprint of kind of what makes this brand unique, right? From there, we can just leverage out to many, many different assets because it's coming from like oh, a holistic central point of view. And it doesn't mean it's a singular sound. It could be you know, uh, something that's heartfelt. It could be something that's energetic. Right. But it all ties together because there's these central narrative and characteristics well, sound like is, the breath in the Xbox. Like Sound is so abstract though. How do you... Um, how are you able to key in an abstract thing like like a sound to a, a possibly also abstract concept like dependable? Um, like you said, one person's might sound different than another person's. So how right. are you able to find something that works both for the company that's hiring you and then you know will be read correctly by their audience? Sure. And there's like three Seems like magic things. to me, like no, sorcery. It's, it's really <laughs> not, you know, and, and that this is the, one of the biggest you know, predictions for 2020 is right. sound and voice. To me, I've been doing this for a long time. It's nothing new. It's the technologies. What we do is we involve the client from the beginning. That's critical. Right. Have the people that are invested in it. But what we do is we have a series of tools and methodologies that we've built. I mean, we're doing this for a long time. And we have ways of engaging them to show them a wide range of ways you could say dependable. Right. If it's a characteristic like that. Sure. Or, you know, health focused. Right. You know, we're doing something right now with a, a physician who also has Alexa skills on healthcare. Okay. He's very energetic, but he's also very scientific. Okay. It's that blend of those characteristics that make his sound unique. Interesting. To him. Um, so, you know, you're talking about voice being important. We're talking about tech, all these things. What are the trends uh, for sonic branding moving forward? What are the, the things that you're looking at lately and companies are most wanting from you moving forward? I think that this whole industry, and for someone who's done it for quite a long time, it astounds me how gigantic it has gotten. I mean, I spoke at Advertising Week and th there was a whole panel on uh, voice and on right. audio right. with NPR. Here, for the first time, we had uh, voice at CES. So yesterday we had an entire day that was dedicated to voice and audio. So these technologies are emerging. They are in health devices. They are giving back information to physicians. We did a surgical robot to give physicians feedback because they now their eyes are focused on right. a computer and doing surgical right. procedures. Healthcare devices, heart, you know, fitness crossover with health, everything, education. Um, and, and down to things in science, like the creation of synthetic voices right. for people who may not be able to speak. Right. I mean, this whole industry is going really full on with a gigantic seat at the table. But the important thing is, is that people are realizing now that they have captive audiences. They're listening in their vehicles. They're making devices that need sound that are, sounds that um, bridge technology with empathy right. and warmth and emotion 
And those are the brands that, that's what they're coming to us for. You have something that's the greatest technology, but if it's cold and disconnected, you're not going to resonate with people that are longing for right. these emotional well, it's experiences. It's like Hal from 2001. There There's you certainly go. A, a coldness there. There you um, go. One thing I'm noticing, a lot of these voices um, use female voices for their right. tech. Um, why is that? And and one thing I've, I've read recently that I thought was an interesting take on it was these are often devices that are service devices. You know, the, you know Siri, tell me this. Whatever, tell me this. Right. And um, there's concern that by using female voices, it's still sort of that secretarial role. Um, exactly. And one person interviewed said they regretted sort of initially looking at female voices because it has sort of done that, and maybe they could have used a male voice. So where are we on that, like in terms of types of voices we oh, use? Oh, I think that there's this um, voice bot, AI, and, and Brett Kinsella, who's amazing, did a, a, a piece just on that. Okay. And the difference is, you know, it's is, is changed over the years. Sure. In the past, the woman would, you know, be the one to give you the reassuring information, and the male voice would give you, you know, that critical information. Right. And it's, it's starting to shift quite a bit. And we're getting where um, the voice needs to align with the brand. Okay. So I've done voice tremendous amounts of voice branding and just to be clear with everybody the process that we use is the same you would use in a visual identity years ago everything was about the visual identity you know the font and placement right. of picture and everything else but the sound was you know for not for the grant brands that really knew a lot about it and knew how valuable it was but oh I, my neighbor has you know garage band and can do something you know but now when you have a brand and the same filter we were talking about, that we create that sonic filter, we line the voices up and we're doing as much male voice casting as female. We just, we're working on a project that's concluding today for one of the top five brands in the world and the voices are mixed equally, 50-50. Interesting. Yes. Um, last question, what are the trends, um, what are you most excited about in terms of the development of sonic branding moving forward? You've been doing this for a long time, um, but obviously as the technology changes and people's needs changes and the recognition of what type of branding they need is changing and evolving, where are you seeing things going? I think that it's, it's at a point right now where it's a little bit like the Wild West, because everybody is making these devices. Right. Everybody is a startup and doing something in in AI and doing something in you know voice assistants and things of that nature. So it's just starting to settle down just a little bit. But what I think, and I was just asked to do a prediction. To me, the most exciting area is the healthcare devices, okay. because what's going on there is just like completely mind blowing. But on a personal level, for somebody who has a business, and we've been fortunate to have really fantastic clients all along that got it. So now we have even more clients, but we want to make sure they're getting the right story about what real, true sonic branding initiatives take to do. It's not just, you know, call us up, we're going to do a sound logo for you and you're out the door. You know, if you do it the right way, it brings a great return on investment. But the fact that people are even talking about it, that we had a whole day here at CES for the first time with the biggest brands right, in the world, right. it, it was it, it's pretty exciting times for me. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming well, on the show. Well, thank you so this much. This is fascinating. Uh, it's not something I knew anything about. And so what does your brand sound like? My brand sounds like uh, probably someone snoring at this point because I'm so <laughs> tired. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't thought about we'll it. We'll talk about it. We will have to. Um, <laughs> Stick around. Uh, this is Brian Stillman with Be Terrific. Um, we'll be back with much more coverage, CES 2020, after this. Life is on.
welcome to YouTube Kids. Get a grown-up's help.